Are you getting ready to rebuild your F25 or F35 and contemplating changing the final drive? Let's talk about it. Welcome back to the shop, everybody. It's Snail here at Snailworks, and today we're gonna to be going over final drive options for the F25 and F35. So if you're getting ready to rebuild your F25 slash F35, this video is definitely for you. Now, as you can see here, I have F25 slash F35. Now, arguably, this is technically an F25. This is out of a Vigan. Now, what I will tell you is the F25 and F35 are, are practically the same transmission. Now, obviously, the F35 is cable shaft driven, where the F25 is rod uh, shaft driven. New NG93s, they're gonna be using cables and OG93s, 95s, uh, 9000s, NG900s. Those are gonna be using a rod shifter. So internally, they're almost identical in every way. There are a few changes. And today we're gonna to be specifically talking about the four different final drive options that you could effectively put into your new transmission build. Or if you're just looking at maybe swapping the final drive out for uh, economy reasons or performance reasons, we're gonna kind of go over some of those options. There. So we actually have four final drives over here. I'm gonna go ahead and stop myself real quick. And before someone says it and says, oh, so now there's actually five final drives. Are you sure you know what you're talking about? Yes, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to explain something real quick. There are five final drives. The fifth final drive is so ungodly rare, the likelihood of you ever finding one is, is next to none. Now, it is a 421 final drive. It was found in the earlier 9000 and is a phenomenal final drive. If we had to pick a final drive on this list, it would be the one that we would go with. It is perfect in every category. It is hands down our favorite. Now, the likelihood of you finding one is slim to none, so we are not gonna include it in the rest of this video. On the table over here that we're gonna kind of go over with you. Um, now, these are the four final drives that you're gonna be able to find in various models. Now, whether you're driving a Cobalt SS or an OG95 or an NG900, more or less, this is going to work for any of those transmissions, whether it be the F25 or F35, the final drives are all shared. So, and even in some cases, if even if you're driving a Saturn L200. Uh, now with that, each individual final drive is gonna have different characteristics, perform very differently, and have an overall different driving experience for you and your potential build. So whether it is that your transmission is starting to fail or you're looking at maybe potentially rebuilding your transmission to hold more power, or you just happen to wanna maybe get better fuel economy, we're gonna go over each individual final drive and tell you about the pros and cons of each one and help you decide which final drive is best for your build. The final drive options we have, starting here on my right, I have a 445, next to that I have a 405, Next to that, I have a 382, and last but not least, I have the 361. Now, we are gonna briefly go over which final drive was in what cars and where you can find them if you're trying to source one. It is getting a little bit more difficult to actually find some of these transmission uh, final drives. Used is really your only option at this point. New, I'll be honest with you, it's been almost probably close to 15, 16 years now that you've actually been able to buy these final drive new. So if you are going to be effectively using any of these final drives, you can reach out to someone like us or other transmission builders that may be able to help you to source one. But in reality, uh, you're probably going to be going to the junkyard and sourcing your own. Oh man, I hate being at the junkyard. So as Cody meanders around the junkyard looking for final drives, let me tell you which cars he could possibly be looking for, starting with the 445. The 445 is found in a few naturally aspirated F25 and F35 cars. For example, the Saturn L200 and of course the naturally aspirated NG900 25 and 2 liter. Now moving on to by far the most plentiful of the final drives, the 405. If you have an F25 or F35 gearbox in your car, you most likely have this final drive. Whether it be a Cobalt, a 95, or even a Calibra, this is the most common and most easy to find final drive. Next, we're moving on to a final drive that is a little bit more difficult to find than the 405, the 382. It's found in later year Cobalt SS's, multiple years of the NG900, and depending on where you are in the world, various Opal Calibras and Cavaliers, as well as some diesel 95s. And the last final drive, the 361, is arguably really only easy to find in one place, the 9000 Aero. So now that we've gone over where you can locate the final drives and which cars had them, we're gonna kind of talk more in depth about what characteristics those final drives have. Now, starting with the 445 here, which once again, trying to find one of these is getting very difficult. Ironically, as Allison just said, the L200 is one of those few cars and those are like hen's teeth. And if you're lucky enough to find that NG900 uh, 445 transmission, that's just as rare. Pros of the 445, 
Strongest final drive with most material. Best for drag racing. The best tolerances for rebuilding your gearbox. Substantially quicker gear changes. Let's talk about the cons of the 445. Arguably, it is the hardest final drive to find at this point in time. Two, when you do find one, it's extremely expensive usually. If you plan on daily driving your car or wanting to get relatively okay gas mileage, this is not the final drive for you. Hands down, the worst fuel economy. If you're planning on doing any highway speeds over 75 miles an hour, you will be over 3,000 RPM. Now the 405 is hands down the most common final drive you're going to find in F25 and F35. Now with that being said, it is going to arguably be more common for daily driving usage. Um, it's not the strongest, it's not the weakest. However, it is going to give you what I would deem as the most daily drivable uh, for all applications in the sense of city driving and highway driving. Now, with that, it doesn't really shine in any other application other than a good daily driver. So going over the pros and cons with this one, it's pretty straightforward. This brings us to the 382. Now, it is a little easier to find over the 445, but not quite as easy as the 405. Now, the 382 was put in various models, um, as Allison mentioned earlier, so it is a little easier to locate one. Now, with the 382, if you're somebody that is arguably more of a highway cruiser or really wants to get into that what's called the turbo lag world of things and ease into the throttle the 382 definitely makes the most sense you're going to get the best fuel economy and if you're going for that highway pull um, or that daily drivability in the sense of getting better fuel economy things along those lines the 382 is definitely the way to go pros of the 382 amazing top end great for highway pulls going to see the best fuel economy if you're looking to make 350 to 400 brake horsepower, perfect final drive. So last but not least, we have the 361. Now, we don't really necessarily hate the 361 final drive. However, it is the weakest. So if you are planning on making more than 350 horsepower, this is not the final drive for you. I don't plan on making more than 350 horsepower. The Saab engineer designed it perfectly. Why do I need to modify it? I've never had any problems with this transmission. Why would I need to change anything? I love my 9000 RS the ultimate highway cruiser. The 361 final drive is the best final drive. Don't listen to this guy. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Our 9000 owner over here is not wrong. The 361 is by far the best for highway cruising. However, if you plan on making anything over 300, 350 horsepower max, it is a horrible final drive. But besides the power, the 361 is also horrible because it puts the most strain on third gear out of all of the final drives we just told you guys about. But in reality, this final drive belongs one place. The garbage. Pros and cons of the 361. Pros, best fuel economy overall, best for cruising. Cons, least material, weakest final drive by far not the best acceleration on smaller frame turbos. So to help clarify a few things for anyone that's not quite understanding how final drives work as well, I'll kind of give you a comparison between a 445 and a 382. Now the 445 is the larger number, yes, but that also means that it is technically the shorter final drive. So the shorter final drive, meaning it is going to complete its revolution sooner versus a longer final drive like the 382, it's going to take longer to complete its revolution. So with that being said, a 445 is going to get to red line quicker, where a 382 is going to take longer to get to your red line. Now a 445 is technically going to have a much lower top speed compared to the 382. Okay, so let's talk about a hypothetical scenario Let's say that we have a fully built car with an HX35 or a GTX30, whatever large size turbo that happens to be on the car. And we have a head that's fully built with upgraded valve springs that allows us to rev the 7,500 RPM. So we're gonna set our baseline at 7,500 RPM and let's also pick a more commonly found tire and wheel combo. So we're gonna go with a 225-50 R17, which is roughly 25.9 inch diameter at 7,500 RPM we're gonna have different top speeds for each final drive. Now the top speed we're gonna have for the 445 is gonna be roughly 186 miles per hour. The 405, we're gonna be sitting at 204 miles per hour. And the 382, we're gonna be sitting at 216 miles per hour. 
Now, something else to factor in here, we are utilizing a fifth gear that is a 0 0.70. So there is a slightly better uh, fifth gear in some of these transmissions and a slightly worse fifth gear in some of these transmissions. All right, so let's talk about another hypothetical scenario. And we're gonna be cruising at, let's say 75 miles per hour on the highway. Now, what RPM is that gonna put us at with each final drive? We're gonna start with the 382. That's gonna put us at 2,600 RPM. Relatively low, phenomenal for fuel economy at this point, and is going to be arguably the best cruiser. What does it look like for the 405? Well, it's gonna be slightly higher at 2,750. So arguably still relatively decent for highway cruising. But once we get to the 445, it puts us just over 3,000 RPMs at 3,050 RPM. If you're looking at having a comfortable daily driver and looking at going on average of 70 to 75, 80 miles per hour on the highway, 445 gets a little annoying at times. So at this point, I think everyone kind of understands the 445 arguably is going to be the most aggressive final drive, the strongest, and really not the best for highway driving or fuel economy. So. If you're looking for something that is going to be the best maybe at the drag strip or for autocrossing, um, taking to maybe you know an SCCA meet or something along those lines, the 445 definitely makes the most sense. But if you're gonna daily drive the car or go in excess of speeds on average, maybe 85, 90 miles per hour, it gets very annoying very quickly. So really that brings us to a valid point of which would you pick between the 382 and the 405? Well, arguably the 405 is technically slightly stronger than the 382. However, the 405 is substantially weaker compared to the 445. So horsepower wise, these are both going to make about the same amount of power safely on a built transmission. Now, if you leave the transmission unbuilt and don't go in and strengthen some of those other components, arguably the 382 is going to be slightly weaker on your third gear. The 405 is going to more or less be a little better for putting less load on third gear, where the 382 is gonna have a little bit uh, more strain on that third gear. However, if you properly space third gear and build those transmissions, which we'll go into more depth on another video at a later date, um, really, you're not gonna really have any issues once you have the transmission built on either one. So to compare the three, we're gonna go ahead and stack all three of these final drives on top of each other, just to show you kind of how much more meat each one has, just so you can kind of say, okay, why are you saying the 445 is so much stronger than the 405 and the 382? We'll actually show you the difference. Now, so as you can see, we have the 382 on the top and the 445 on the bottom and the 405 in the middle. Now, as you can see, there is substantially more uh, teeth, as you can see, sticking out on the bottom versus the top. Now, we do have these perfectly flush on the backside. So you can actually see how much more material there is on the 445 to the 405 to the 382. Now, more material doesn't necessarily mean stronger, but in this case, it actually does. So with that, the 445 has arguably the best tolerances as well when it sits in the transmission bell housing itself. So it does help with strength. Now, once again, as we rebuild these transmissions, we do do a lot of things inside those transmissions to help alleviate some of that stress and strain, especially on third gear. Now, if you are somebody that maybe comes across a final drive and you're like, hey, how can I actually tell the difference if I don't have each final drive side by side? The easiest thing to do is count the teeth. So we have a 382 here, it's gonna have 22 teeth. Next up, we're gonna have the 405, which is gonna have 21 teeth. And the 445, which is gonna have 20 teeth. So if you find yourself in the junkyard, that's an easy way to test which final drive you're looking at, count the teeth. Now, obviously someone's gonna say it, and before someone says, hey, what about the 361? How many teeth are on that? Well, obviously if there's 22 on the 382, there's gonna be an additional one, which ends up being 23. So 23 on the 361, 22 on the 382, 21 on the 405, and 20 on the 445. Now that we're finishing up with this final drive video, we're actually getting ready to film a very much requested F25 slash F35 assembly video. Now we're gonna be going over those components that fail frequently in these gearboxes and also what upgrades we do to strengthen these gearboxes. Now, if you saw something in the video today or that video that's getting ready to come up with that rebuild, please let us know what you'd like to see in that video. And of course, let us know which final drive you would choose for your build in the comments below. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.